Hey guys, are you tired of the never ending nine to five grind and you want to create for yourself a life where work becomes optional? I know that can sound very dreamy, but it can actually become a reality. Today I want to explore five different assets that you need to explore investing in for yourself to never have to work again if you don't want to. Today I want to make it super real. I'm going to be sharing this today as though I was giving advice to my own mum. I do not want my mum to lose, lose even a penny or a pound of her hard earned money. So today I want to share with you what I would literally say to my mum if she had that same desire in her own life as well. Now, before I jump into these five different areas, I've got a favor to ask you guys. About 51.7% of you guys who watch our videos weekly and monthly are currently unsubscribed. That's a huge number. It would mean the world to me and the world to my wife, Mary, if you please hit the subscribe button, especially if the videos we're making are helping you to improve your personal finances. It will help us enormously as we work towards getting to 100,000 subscribers. As at the time of making this video, we're currently at 68,000 subscribers and it's felt like forever getting to where we are. And we appreciate every single one of you who has subscribed. Now, before we start and go into these five ideas, let's explore some mindsets. I'm going to be explaining something to you, a concept that has helped me to really think of wealth very differently. It's the concept, and I hope you can see this, of the stock and the flow. Now, what are the stock and flow and how do they relate to this idea of the five different assets I'm going to talk about today? You see, when you think about your wealth building, what you want to achieve is a world where you've created a balance between stocks, which are assets, the things that you're building, and the flow, which is your income, or the inputs you're putting in in order to create income. Now, you see, most people focus all their efforts on the flow. Over here. So they, they look at their jobs, yeah? People want to use their jobs to create the flow. And this is where the whole idea of um, you know, uh, following the Joneses or lifestyle creep comes in because all we're really focused on is using our job to create that flow and for that flow to then support our lifestyles. And that's it. So as long as we get that money, we're happy. And then we try to get more money. And as we get that pay rise, we are over time then looking to potentially uh, lifestyle creep, you know, buy that bigger house, buy that bigger car, all those things, go on that bigger holiday and so on. Whereas if you want to create a life where work becomes optional, what you want is to create flow that therefore goes on to create your stock, okay? You want some of your flow every single month to be put aside to help you build property, to help you build various assets. I'm gonna be covering five of them specifically on today's video. And this is where it gets even more beautiful. Over time, what you then want is for your stock to then start to create your flow and then to create this circular motion where even if you're getting money from your day job, that money goes in to create more stock and then that stock goes on to create more flow in your life. And therein is a circular motion you want to create that balance of stock and flow in order to make your work completely optional one day. I know this is possible because I've done it with my wife, Mary, and I know many people who've achieved this in their lives, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, and beyond. And I know this is possible for you as well. So, let's jump in and let me share these ideas. And if you're really enjoying today's video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as I mentioned earlier. Now, I'm gonna say this, right? The ideas I'm gonna share, I'm gonna go into a lot of detail on. The thing I want to say though is, please don't watch this and think, that's Ken over there and that's me over there. Yeah, good for him and he's gotten to where he is in his life. I want to start by saying that I started with nothing. No assets, no money, no inheritance, nothing. So what I'm gonna be saying to you right now, like I said, is what I'm gonna be sharing if I was talking to my mum. And my desire for you is that you pick one idea, you grab onto one thing, you don't watch this as entertainment, but you see this as, you know what? This person is sharing with me like game-changing information that I can use to change my own life. But start small, but actually do something with it. So the very first asset I would invest my money into is into stocks. So this is different to the stock I mentioned earlier because it's a part of that stock, your body of assets. 
But here I'm talking about stocks in the stock market. Okay. Now with stocks, and I'm looking here because I've made some notes on my phone. Now with stocks, what you're doing here is creating ownership in companies. You're owning a piece of the pie so that when those companies therefore go out there and try to increase their share price and their employees work hard, they are working hard for you. So for example, if you buy Amazon stock or Apple stock or Microsoft stock or whatever, or a fund that has all those things, the people who are working in all those companies are working hard every single month doing their nine to five jobs to make you richer and wealthier over time. So the first area of stocks, stock investing is passive investing. We talk a great deal about this on this channel. Here we're talking about investing in index funds and ETFs, essentially investing in passive trackers that track a, an established um, uh, list of stocks. I uh, lost my words there for a second. Uh, an index such as the S&P 500 and so on. You are tracking that and therefore trying to gain the performance of the marketplace. Okay, And that performance is good enough. And by doing that, it's a hands-off way of investing your money. Your money gets to work. The goal of investing in index funds is essentially for you to invest for capital appreciation. You want your money to grow over time. And you also want to, as part of that, to invest for income so that that money, that dividend you're getting from investing your money in index funds and ETFs are then reinvested to help your wealth to grow over time. So that's passive investing. And if you've not seen videos to that, I'll signpost you to a video we've made recently to help you. Next, apart from passive investing, is active investing. Now, I'm not a huge fan of active investing, but there are some exceptions I make. First is individual stocks. Should you be investing in individual stocks? Now, for most people, I'll say no, because stock picking leads to you mostly, most likely to lose your money. You're most likely to do it, but not everybody could lose their money from picking stocks. I've done well from selecting individual stocks. I've done well picking specific stocks for my children, Apple stock, Amazon stock and so on, using their birth, birthday monies, including our own portfolio of, of our pension and so on. So you can pick an individual, individual stock, but for most people, it's a no, because you most likely lose your money, okay? And even if you wanted to pick an individual stock, our policy is don't use more than 5% of your money to pick individual, individual stocks. Do it for the learning, do it for the fun, do it for the adventure, do it for the potential returns, but don't make that a key part of your core investing strategy. Next part of active investing is dividend stock investing. Now, this is where I would make the exception when it comes to investing in individual stocks because you are doing a lot of research to invest in a stock that pays you a dividend. That's their core strategy. When companies make money and they make their profits, they do two things. They can either pay a dividend to shareholders or they can reinvest some of their money into their business to help their business to grow, uh, investing in marketing, you know, products and development, that kind of stuff. So you want to pick that stock and there are different stocks. We've made videos about this, which are linked to below and above specifically for dividend uh, income investing. So this is, a, this is a, another way of investing for that flow. But you're investing in that dividend stock as the stock that will help you to create that flow. Now, the third way looking at active investing is to look at unquoted companies. Unquoted companies, by the name, are unquoted on a stock exchange, per se. They're not, like, listed somewhere where you can invest into them, per se. They're not on the main markets, okay, like your London Stock Exchange and so on, okay? Now, you can invest in some of these via schemes in the UK, for example, known as Venture Capital Trusts, VCTs, or Enterprise Investment Schemes, EIS, or the SEIS, which is uh, another scheme for unquoted companies. These schemes, which you can research, you can Google, help investors like you and I to basically get a tax rebate. They get us to invest in these unqu unquoted companies with the goal of effectively giving us a tax rebate. Essentially a way of the government saying they are trying to put money into unquoted companies and by us putting our money into those companies, we benefit through tax rebates and over time we benefit through our money working for us and us then generating dividends on a regular basis by investing in those types of companies, okay? I've done it, I've invested in unquoted companies via VCTs, Venture Capital Trusts. I still own those shares even today, okay? As part of my investment portfolio, okay? So in the investing arena, I personally focus on passive investing, index funds and ETFs. I've got some individual stocks in my pension. I've got dividend paying stocks. I've also got some unquoted companies via VCTs. Now you choose what works for you based on your attitude to risk, but I've given you a bit of a, a rundown of the core areas that I will focus on from a stock 
perspective. And I'll link below and above to our investing playlist if you want to learn a lot more. The second part I'd focus on is to look at property investing. Now bear with me because I want to go into detail because I don't just want to gloss over these things because I want it to be real because as I said, this is as though I'm giving my mum the advice. When I look at property investing, I will start with something unusual. The first is international property, okay? Now, here I'm talking about looking outside the UK, looking at other parts of the world like Portugal, you know, Lisbon and so on, or looking at the African continent, looking at Ghana or other parts of West Africa, looking at South Africa, for example, in those core cities, Joburg and so on. Those are areas you might want to consider. Now, the reason you might want to do this here is because of income and capital appreciation. When you invest in property, you're typically aiming, aiming for two things, either capital appreciation or income as a way, depending on your goal, okay? So what the method you choose to invest with would depend on what your goal is, whether it's capital or income. This international property strategy will focus primarily on capital appreciation, but then it will create your income via things like Airbnb and so on. Okay? But because it's outside the UK, the rules are slightly different. You might be able to get a mortgage out there. You also get properties a lot cheaper. That's for sure. Okay, That's the first strategy, international property. Second strategy is flipping. And your goal here is clearly capital appreciation. Effectively, you are operating here as a property trader. Okay, You're buying something, you're fixing it up, you're selling it on for a lot of money potentially. Yeah, That's the whole idea. You're doing this and you're repeating this every six months to one year to two years, you are trying to flip. This suits certain people who don't want to deal with the whole malarkey of like trying to rent out a property. They just want to flip, get their money and get out. Okay, and that property is still legit today. You can still do it today. Okay, but it's about finding the right thing. That's strategy two. Strategy three for property is the buy to let. This is a core cool thing people do. The goal here is obviously regular income, which is why people buy and let. At properties. Uh, however, obviously buying property and letting out means those properties exist and they will increase in value over time so you have capital appreciation to go with that as well. However, there are obviously challenges with buy to let related to the likes of regulatory changes, tax changes, there are many things that are going on. So this is an area you might want to consider. Again, we've made videos on you know property before, feel free to check them out over on our property playlist. The fourth strategy is HMO house of multiple occupancy, quite similar to buy to let, but this time you're renting on a per room basis. And your core strategy here is to max out on your returns, on your income, because you're re renting by room, um, you're much more likely to generate a much higher return. And obviously that diversifies your risk a lot more than renting out one property out to a whole family, for example. Okay, so this suits some people, but not everybody else. The fifth strategy is to recycle your cash. The goal with this one is essentially to build an income stream by limiting the capital you need to invest. So imagine you've got just a bit of capital. Your goal then is to recycle that, yeah? You find properties that need refurb work, you do them up, you add value, you refinance, and you get your money out. Essentially, your goal is to um, limit the amount you need to put into another property, such that you're then using the same money and recycling it into other properties, okay? And this obviously takes time. The next strategy from property perspective is to lock away a lump sum. This is where you literally say, do you know what? I've got some money. Let's say you've got 50 grand or 100 grand and you're saying, do you know what? Um, I want to lock it away by investing in a, a really nice flat in a really uh, uh, busy part of town, a really a great location in a busy city, close proximity to a station, blah, 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 blah. And you know it will go up in value significantly because it's really well located. Let's say, for example, in London, making it up, yeah? And you lock that away. Your goal simply is you've invested and your core strategy is capital. Not necessarily the income. The income comes in and pays the mortgage and what have you. Uh, uh, but your core strategy is capital appreciation, such, capital appreciation such that in, say, nine years or 10 years or whenever your time horizon is, you can sell that property and free up your money. Okay, some people do that and it's a great strategy. Next is rent to rent. As the name implies, you're not actually getting your feet wet by owning the properties. You're renting a property from somebody else and thereby going ahead and finding, um, you know, making it your own in a way and renting it out to somebody else and then you're making that profit in between. This is a core income strategy that then has a potential to create for you your own property 
by then you accumulating all that income you generated your profits and investing it to own your own units okay and the final strategy i've got from a property perspective is commercial property here you're looking at the new permitted development uh, rights and things now a lot of that seems like as i've gone through a lot of strategies there from a property perspective if you are interested in learning a lot more about these like I said, I'll point, point you to useful resources. Feel, feel free to check out our, our sister brand over at Financial Joy Academy where we have courses across all these areas, whether it's buy to let, HMO, rent to rent, uh, commercial property, and so on. I'll link to it below and above. Feel free to check it out in your own time. Learn more and join if you find it, if you, if you find it useful. There is also a property mastermind that we run, which is included, and you can join that and meet real property investors and learn from them as well. Um, the third uh, area of uh, assets, the stock that I would invest in, third area of assets is a business. Guys, this is one of the most common ways of building wealth, okay? If you don't have it in you, if you don't have it in your ambitions to grow, to start a business, that's okay. But I personally think that this is one of the fastest ways of building wealth, particularly in this age, where you can use artificial intelligence, you can use all the tools that are available for you to create opportunities that you don't really need to run. Somebody else can run for you uh, and make it work. You can automate a lot of it to help you to generate uh, a lot of income and a lot of wealth over time. But let me break it down. Okay, what are the different areas of business? The first area is startups. Okay. Startups are obviously by nature run by other people, okay? And you're doing this through the likes of angel investing. You're putting a bit of money in and you're looking to see that money become something. Now, I want to be very clear. A lot of people who put money into angel investing lose their money. A fraction make money or a fraction of what you put in might turn into something worthwhile. So I want to be very clear on the risks, okay? That's startups. Next area of business is to invest in basic, boring businesses. Here I'm talking about your hair salons, your dry cleaners, your nurseries, your nail bars. I know about these businesses because my family members all run these types of businesses, okay? And I'm involved in uh, a number of those as well, okay? Your goal here essentially is to turn uh, uh, those businesses into an income earner because you can invest in basic, boring businesses and actually have no active involvement in running those businesses yeah my family run a chain of nurseries i don't really get involved i just like i just offer you know advice and guidance and wisdom yeah but you know it's a part of my overall picture from a kind of, kind of wealth building perspective a kind of net worth perspective so you don't have to be involved necessarily you just just have to be involved and kind of observe from the outside and maybe turn it into an income generator if you need that income you also have the option of selling those basic boring businesses because businesses are built so that you can one day exit them potentially if that is a strategy you want to pursue. So it's not only the income through the dividends you can generate from your business, which is you know, tax at, at, a, at a lower rate to general income tax but um, or, or income from your salary, but you have that option of then selling those businesses. Okay, so that's ba basic boring businesses covered. The third area of business for me would then be to create an online based business. This is by far my most favorite part because I genuinely think that everyone has it in them, the capacity to create a successful online business. And I say that because a lot of online businesses are low cost startups, things you can actually begin on your own alongside your day job and do it and learn the skill because there is a real skill required to run an online business successfully. Online businesses are split into three categories. There's product-based online businesses, so your, your, you know, your uh, Amazon FBA type things, your drop shipping, all those things, your e-commerce essentially, product-based, where you're selling a product-based thing online, okay? The second is your service base, where you are providing a service online, like coaching or graphic design or copywriting or whatever, or, you know, tutoring. It's an online-based, uh, a service-based online business. The third type of online business is your content-based online business, which is similar to what I'm doing right now. I'm creating a YouTube video, that's a piece of content. I'm writing a blog post, that's a piece of content. I've created a membership platform, that's a piece of content in there, yeah? All those types of businesses, the type you choose to go for, whether it's product or service or, or content, would depend on your priorities, how much time you've got, what your income goals are, and things like that, okay? As I mentioned earlier, 
If you're interested in learning more, that kind of stuff, or learning from other people, or being in a space of community of people learning and implementing those things, check out Financial Joy Academy, as I mentioned earlier, where we kind of cover all those things for online business, wealth building, personal finance, property investing. Again, I'll link to it below and above. Learn more in your own time and see if it's suited for you, okay? Number four, after the, after the business, uh, looking at investments, number four is precious metals, okay? Now, this is a bit of an odd one because precious metals, I'm talking here gold, silver, and things like that, okay? And actually owning the actual units themselves, the actual metal units. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this one is that such precious metals are great, essentially, because they maintain the purchasing power of your money. So you have two options. You can either leave money in your bank or you can, if you don't have money, you've invested in the other areas I've mentioned, like stocks and property and business and so on. You could invest it in precious metals because they effectively act as a hedge. Okay. Gold has historically been known as a, uh, a store of value, uh, a thing that essentially uh, helps you to maintain the purchasing power of your money. Okay. And holding that can help you in Kind of the worst case scenario you know where you have your money in you know, a kind of obviously doomsday scenario where you have your money invested in something that's completely outside of the stock market and so on outside of the property market and so on okay but the thing i want to mention is that those precious metals do not create an income for you yeah so property creates you an income the stock market creates you an income uh investing your own business creates you an income but investing in precious metals does not create you an income, the physical units, okay? But it does have its own value in that it's effectively, you know, the stock, as I mentioned uh, in this thing here, in this diagram, it's effectively stock and its goal is to, uh, is to keep the value of your money and it's to uh, prepare you in the event that the worst case scenario happens and so on. Then the fifth and final asset that I would invest in is to invest in yourself. Now I mentioned this one because I must see as the, the supreme asset to investing, the foundational asset to investing that would then create the domino effect for everything else I've mentioned to actually fall into place, for everything else to start to happen, okay? What you're aiming to do here is um, uh, look at different ways you can invest in yourself. You'll be asking yourself, well, how do I actually do that, Ken? Areas I will prioritize from an investing in yourself perspective are, uh, and by the way, the reason I mentioned this beyond it being the, the foundational asset is that investing in yourself will give you the highest return on investment over time. I know for certain that I've had the highest possible ROI, return on investment, by investing in me over the last decade and beyond. Yeah. So I, you know, giving you the advice as someone who I care about and who I want to actually win in life, I'd say investing in yourself should be the core foundational thing that you actually do. But how do you actually do that, Ken? Well, here are the different areas that I would focus on. First, I'd focus on your emotional intelligence and communication skills. Now, investing in your in developing emotional intelligence and communication skills. These qualities, these qualities are highly valued in a professional domain and in a personal domain, yeah? So for example, communication skills are brilliant. Without my communication skills, I couldn't possibly be making these videos. I couldn't possibly become a speaker. Like I get called on to come and do various things, come and do speaking, come and do workshops, come and do uh, you know things like that, speak at schools and stuff like that. Had I not over time developed that communication skill, yeah, whether it's verbal communication or written communication, had I not developed that over time, as well as the emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is all about just um, being able to gauge uh, emotionally uh, the setting you're in. Yeah, so in certain spaces I'm in, I'm able to kind of gauge what's actually happening. I'm able to apply my emotions to certain situations. I'm able to empathize with people's uh, situations that they're in, you know, because not everybody is at the same place at the same time. Pick the cost of living crisis, for example, that we're all going through in the UK and beyond. Emotional intelligence is required to kind of sense that in certain things that I might need to talk about, I have to be very careful to be aware that certain people are not at certain places in their lives financially. And so therefore I have to make sure that I'm applying that intelligence to make sure that I'm also catering for those people. So 
essentially emotional intelligence and communication skills, if you can work on that in different ways, they're, they're skills you can acquire over time, will help you become a much more, uh, how should I put it, valuable in, individual in the open market, you know, out there, okay? So uh, that's one area. The second area I'd look at is side projects and entrepreneurship when it comes to investing in you. I've, I've learned that side projects and entrepreneurship have helped me to reduce and remove the fear of failure. I know the fear of failure is something that you probably can relate to. And I face that fear in different ways and at different stages of my journey. But I think I've found side projects and entrepreneurship, not necessarily things that make you money, but things that are encouraging your creativity. What I've found is that taking those small leaps of faith, those faith walks, has helped me as an individual and improved my capacity to do more. So almost as though my capacity has expanded because I've taken leaps through side projects and entrepreneurship. And as, as a result of that, I've been able to create other things that are maybe diverse income streams and you know business opportunities and joint ventures and stuff like that. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of joint ventures, in case you're thinking to yourself, when it came back to the property stuff I mentioned earlier, one way you can build that capital, because obviously everything involves money, is through joint ventures, actually collaborating with other people and pooling your funds, particularly in communities. I know that's for sure in communities that don't have, that haven't actually started off with a lot of wealth, for example, in the black community, you know, that I, that I live through and I've lived through and continue to, I know that the likes of joint ventures and obviously other ethnic minority groups, I know that the likes of joint ventures are what we need as, as one way of actually, you know, uh, creating assets and owning assets and things like that. The next way of actually uh, investing in yourself is through your financial literacy. We obviously know that, that's why you're here on our channel watching these videos, but uh, financial education for me has been a game changer. I've had to learn a lot of this the hard way, but I'm always investing in myself. I'm always reading whether I'm reading Financial Times, or I'm reading general news, uh, or whatever. Uh, when I say general news, I mean like, like news I actually seek out, things that are actually uh, going to help me grow as an individual rather than just consuming like random things that have been posted. Uh, or whether it's me um, learning through books and through courses and through other communities, so or watching videos on YouTube like you are. Uh, financial literacy is absolutely key. The next is networking and building relationships. Now, cultivating meaningful uh, connections and expanding your network is what I'm referring to here. And also friendships, like I saw a video the other day of this girl who was saying how she basically had no friends. And that video really hit me emotionally because I thought, wow, you know, this is a really big problem. You know, a lot of us don't know how to actually network. We don't know how to actually connect with people. We've lost that connection because of the likes of social media and so on, where we effectively have this fake world where we don't really, we're supposedly connected, but we're not connected at all. And I got really, actually, actually, really, I actually felt quite, I felt quite emotionally, um, I couldn't explain it. I just felt, I felt quite sad. It's probably the best way to put it because I thought, wow, there are actually people out there who don't know how to connect with other people. And that's why for me personally, doing what we do here on YouTube and, and you know, trying to build a community of people and then building community offline because we do offline meetups and so it's actually pretty important because it's through there that you get to meet people. It's through there that you get to actually meet real friends, people who understand what you're doing, who uh, can empathize with your journey, who can empathize with where you're trying to get to and the challenges you might have, and who might actually have ideas for how you actually get there. So I'm not saying this because it's, you know, it sounds good or it sells you or whatever. I'm just telling you because that's that's just the reality of it. It's, you have to put yourself in those spaces where you are getting to meet people who you could then potentially become friends with and network and build real meaningful relationships with. Next area of uh, investing in yourself is health and wellness. Do you know what? I'd say this is one of the biggest areas for me on a personal level. Um, you know, I'm talking here food, rest, sleep, you know, uh, workouts and that kind of stuff. And then the final bit is continual learning, okay? Uh, that ongoing learning is absolutely necessary to invest in yourself. In conclusion, what we want to create for ourselves is what I call a multi-stock and flow approach, okay? It's a combination of those different investments in those stock areas that I've talked about, property, business, uh, the stock market, investing in yourself, investing in precious metals, for example, that then creates that flow over time, such that you then have 
multiple sources of income driven by your approach to investing in these multi-stock areas I mentioned in today's video. And I also wanted to say that it's important to take things slowly. It can all seem very overwhelming. And you might feel that, you know what, there's so many things that I need to look into potentially that it even paralyzes you. I'd say focus on one thing. Pick one thing I've talked about in this video. In fact, jump in the comments and let me know what your one thing is. Which one of the five things I mentioned today will you be focusing on as your very next step and why? Jump in the comments and let me know what that one thing is. For me personally, it's about focusing on that one thing in order for you to then implement that one thing, say over the next six months or the next 12 months. And once you've implemented that one area, you can then move on to the next area, okay? And I wanted to wrap up this video by saying that, you know, I've not talked, obviously this list I've shared today, I've looked at only five areas, areas that I personally have complete experience of, tried and tested. But there are other areas that I didn't talk about. There are lots of speculative investments that exist out there like cryptocurrencies and beyond. I didn't talk about them on this video today simply because um, those are areas that I didn't think that I, if I was giving my mum the advice, I wouldn't point my mum towards. Yeah, But that doesn't mean that it's not an area you might, you might, not, you might want to explore yourself. You could explore it yourself if you wanted. But what I would say is always apl apply a risk-based approach to your investing. Aim to have a maximum of 5%. And I've had people laugh at me when I talk about this in the past. They say, oh, well, how can you only apply 5% to crypto? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to keep my money. I'm not trying to lose my money, right? So a maximum of 5% to all speculative investments, including any cryptocurrencies or anything like that, okay? But overall, take this multi-stock and flow approach. And I believe very strongly that if you took the advice I've shared today on this video, you will one day design that life where you will make work, you make your work completely optional and you might continue working, but you do it because you love what you're doing and it's not necessarily because of the money. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And as always, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care people and bye for now.